five, four, three, two, one. It's the new Panic Room. It's the show other shows want to be, and the show that authors want to be on. Da! The all-new Panic Room Radio Show is brought to you by HellboundBooks.com. <laughs> well, here we are. Here. Oh, they faded a bit fast, didn't they? Here we are. It is the new Panic Room episode 145, which only means there's been 144 before it. Um, heaven only knows how many. That's, 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 that's coming up to... Three years worth of, of, of nonsense, which is brilliant. I, 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 somebody needs to work out how many hours that is. It's probably far too many than is good for us. Probably not healthy, but um, and it is nine thirty central and um, Thursday. Uh, it, it, and it, summer kids are kids have finally broken up for summer, so it's sort of beginning of the time of the year, and I just totally lose track. All the days, it's like just one long Saturday now, so um, I, I just, I don't know when I'm coming or going most of the time. I, I don't, anyway, tell you the truth, it, it's, everything's a bit of a fog at the moment, but um, yeah, so it's, um, it is, it is summer, uh, officially. So i got the bloody kids to deal with, which is, which is nice. God bless them, as I say, God bless them. And um, yeah, speaking of things that I, I have to deal with, um, it, 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 we, we, we're going to do this. Come on, are we?
Hi, hi, it's Sheena. How are you there? I am here. I don't know who else can hear us, but I hear you fine. Is this, okay. uh, is that, I, I don't know. Is this no, nobody hearing us? Is this, is this the problem? Um, well, we have two listeners that I know of that are saying they don't hear anything. Right. Okay. Well, that's, um, <laughs> that's a very bizarre. Well, tell you what, just keep, keep tell you what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to dial in on my, uh, on my <laughs> cell phone. And I oh, know that's not going to work, is it? Um, <laughs> no, I, I don't. I, I, if anybody's, if anybody's listening that can't hear us, then if you can let us know. Although, that's not going to work, is it? Um, I'll tell you what we're going to yeah, do. I'll tell you what, yeah. <laughs> um, what we're going to do, I don't know. I, I, how do we, we, I suppose we could just carry on and hope that uh, yeah. people can hear us. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, stranger things have happened, I'm sure. You know, and, and we can, you know, just sit here and waffle on because we're, we're really good at it. Huh? Uh, yeah, Car- uh, Carlos is saying that he still can't hear anything. And, oh, wait. Yeah. Well, Kirsten can hear, but she's on hold, so maybe that's the yeah. Yeah, she Kirsten can hear can through hear. through that. Yeah, I I don't know what the pro- the problem must be with the uh, maybe it's the broadcasty people then because everything's tickety boo at this end. So I, I I don't know what to suggest. We just carry on, I think. Yeah, because we'll still have the yeah we'll still have it. Um, it'll still go on YouTube and in iTunes. So of course, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> where we, normally at this time of the, the the show we'd be you know talking about you know uh, current events. Do we? Oh, do we I know. No, no, but we we don't talk about anything until we're pressed. What's new, pussycat? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's new, pussycat? Whoa, whoa, whoa. So hey, what is new, pussycat? I don't know. Um, I knew what was, you know, I knew some of the stuff that was new last week, but I'm, I'm totally, you know, I, I don't know what's going on this week. Um, and to be honest, we just did a show like it seems like two days ago. So it, I, I was, it, was, it was like 20 minutes ago we did a show. Um, <laughs> yes, well, I tell you what, um, I, again, don't spoil it for me. I, I've, I've yet to watch um, episode uh, four of Ch- Chernobyl because there's five, I believe, in, in total. So there's one more yeah. after this year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which I'm re- I just had I've not had the time to do it. Uh, there's a couple of movies I've had to watch for uh, research, funnily enough. Um, but I tell you, if, if you if you like you know similar similar vein is um, the the Hot Zone, which is uh-huh. actually about the Ebola outbreak back in '89. So it's just, it, it, it's not as gritty as Chernobyl. But if you enjoy Chernobyl, again. Um, I think it's on Fox FX or whatever. You, you, you'll be able to find it. Uh, mm, and he's, he's yeah. enjoying it. It's good. Again, it, it, it was it's the true life story of the Ebola when he actually hit American soil and there was. I mean, Ebola is just like they describe it as a monster, and it is. I mean, it, it came over from Africa, where it, it was inherent in monkeys, and it, it jumped the species gap. And that that's when things like that get really, really dangerous. Um, yeah. And Ebola is there is no vaccine, there is no cure. It has a ninety percent um, death rate. So pretty much, wow. you know, you get yourself, and it's just a horrible way to die as well. Um, it, it breaks down the, the internal organs. Uh, I think it starts with the liver. Um, it breaks down on a cellular level the internal organs. So literally, you dissolve from the inside. You bleed from every possible yeah. orifice that you can imagine and yeah it, it, it's just a uh, horrible nasty um and it's one of those things it, it, it's it's like a lot of diseases when they jump the the species barrier i mean in, in monkeys that they sort of it sort of creates a sort of a you know, it's nothing quite as dramatic if it could kill them but um when it jumps into a host that it's nowhere near prepared for it. That's when things get really nasty. So, um, yeah, I, I, I would recommend it. The Hot Zone is, is, is pretty good. Um, I'm sure I think, oh, I watched, I saw uh, The Perfection. Uh, have you seen that I, yet? No? I don't even know what that is. No, no, huh? It's a film. What is it? It's a film. Well, I know that, but what's it about? <laughs> oh. Oh. It's, um... <laughs> 
It's pretty good, actually. It's, uh, it's about a, a, a cellist, so it's cellists, I don't know how you pronounce it, cello players, uh, who are sort of, you know, pro uh, prodigies and blah de blah de blah and it, it, it descends into a story of abuse. And it's incredibly well done, though. It's got Alison Williams in it, yeah. who's the girl in um, Get Out. Uh, and also from mm -hmm. um, Girls as well which was a, yeah. a series I, I quite enjoyed. Um, and, yeah, it, it is. It's incredibly well done. Uh, there's some nice twists and turns in it. And some, it gets pretty, you know, pretty gory. But, um, again, I would recommend it. You know, it's, it's a good old... Um, it was funny because they it, it, it said, you know, it, if you like um, Hereditary, you'll love this. And I was... Because uh, my daughter loves Hereditary. It's one of her favourite horror movies. And I thought, uh -huh. well, I'll, 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 I'll watch it first, uh, just to make sure. I'm glad I didn't sit and watch it with my daughter. Because it, it, it's uh, um, yeah. not so much the gory bits, it, because it, it deals with abuse, and I mean, abuse of children as well. And there's some pretty steamy yeah. lesbian scenes in it. So, I'll, I'll, you know, just for my own awkward, <laughs> awkward fact, you know. <laughs> um, right. you know we, 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 we sat, she watched, we watched Atomic Blonde. I think we saw that at the movies, actually, because she wanted to see it. And she, she refers to it as, as that lesbian film now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I, I spared myself that. I am anxiously waiting the uh, season premiere of um, Handmaid's Tale. I mean, I know you haven't watched it yet, but... Um, they, they're still filming yeah. it. They're still filming yeah, it, yeah. so it's going to be a yeah. while yet. It'll be a while no, yet. No, I think no, have the trailers come no. out yet. No, yeah, season five premieres um, on, like, uh, sorry, season three premieres on the 5th, I think, of June. So it's coming out soon. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, did, I, I, thought, I thought they were still filming it. I said, oh, oh, I'm excited. Yeah. I am excited. That was yeah. tremendous. I, I, I didn't watch it for the longest time because I thought it was period drama because of that yeah. hat that she wears. And then, yeah, I think somebody, yeah. it might have even been you, said, you've you really got to see this, you know, and I, and I saw the fact, wow. And it was just yeah, solid. The, the, really good. The, the, the two seasons were just, I think I watched them back to back pretty much, because I binge watched Yeah, there's them. a trailer. Yeah, there's a trailer oh, out. Oh, um, I'm going to look for those. It looks, yes, it looks super. It really does. I can't wait to uh, to start the new season. So I'm I'm excited for that. Mm. I shall, um, yeah. yeah, I will, I'll be, there's, there's a few good things coming up, um, uh, and I've forgotten what they are, so, but just believe me, listeners, there is some good stuff <laughs> coming you. up, there is some good, and it, which is good, because cause normally, summer is like the dead zone for TV shows, you know, it's where they, they put out all the crap, you know, all the stuff that oh, we've, we've made, it, we've got to put it out somewhere, you know, you know, and usually then, I, I tend to stockpile stuff, for summer, so I've always got something good to watch. Otherwise, it's just just you're just watching shite for three months. Uh, but no, there's there's some good stuff. There's some good stuff. So I'm excited. I'm yeah, excited. I'm, I'm probably uh, I'm probably more more excited for Toy Story Four than I should be, to be honest. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I love Toy Story. Great. I thought I just feel, said to my daughter, I said, "There's Toy Story Four coming." She just looked at me like I was some sort of you know special <laughs> child. So I guess I guess I'm not she's not taking me to see that then. No, probably not. Mm. I'm still no. sad about the Game of Thrones, you know, being over. I am. I, I'm 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 mourning. I'm still in mourning. Um mm -hmm. so do you have I'm, to keep watching? ambivalent about the whole thing because I never watched it. Uh, so I know, I know, but you need to. It's so good. I really think if you get I don't know. Some people say you have to get through season one. Some people say a few episodes. I was hooked on the first one. I don't know about episode, like, I don't know episode one. I watched it and was like, hmm. maybe because there was no dragons in it. But I, I mean, it, no. it, it's, it's a funny thing. It's got all the elements. It's got dragons. It's got you know deaths. It's got boobs. It's that got is, sex. Yeah, so and yeah, it just just. D didn't grab me, you know, and I just thought, well, mm, mm, Yeah, mm. it, I don't know, I was intrigued right away, and I definitely kept with it, and now I'm just like, that was epic, I mean, that, that's yeah. how I feel about May, it. Maybe in my mind it's a period drama, and my brain just switches off to period <laughs> dramas, it could be that, it could be it that. Could be. 
It could mm. be, although I don't think there's anywhere in it that tells us, you know, what time period we're in, what, you know, or even what universe we're in. I don't think we're well, supposed it's, to it's know. Well, it's a totally different world, isn't it? You know, which is, yeah, which is pretty, yeah, I yeah. mean, you know, George, George Martin and he created a whole world, which is phenomenal. You know, it's like, yeah, like almost like Tol- Tolkien-esque, I guess. But um, I, I, I'm, I will, again, it's just finding the time these days. You know, there's that, you know, there's oh, always... Oh, I know. And I, I, you know, I... To, a movie, just a movie, you know, takes me three or four sittings because I, you know, I always watch it late at night <laughs> and I'm always nodding off. I watch it like <laughs> half hour, half hour bits. But um, yeah, it'd be nice just to be able to sit and binge watch again. I'm gonna have to make some time to do that. Yeah, definitely, but, definitely. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry, I need a drink of water. I've got, I've got two, I've, I've got two holes. Yeah, I've got my esophagus, I've got the track here, and I've got it down the wrong fucking one. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, seriously, Jim, I mean, you know. How hard can it be? Yeah, like you're, how hard can it be? Like, you're not, you're not yeah. new at it, so you should definitely... Uh, no, I know. I know. I know. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> anywho, 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 move before I might actually drown myself in a glass of water. Uh, <laughs> in fact, actually, funnily enough, I actually inhaled a small ice cube yesterday. Nice. I was thinking of and I, and I, I don't know, got my coordination wrong, and it was funny because it was actually in the throat, and I thought, well, if I just stay calm, it'll melt. And it <laughs> oh did. God. And it yeah, did. And I didn't choke to death, which was great. It did melt quick enough for me to be able to breathe again. <laughs> so that was, that was a result, I thought. So, <laughs> hey, what have we got, to, what have we got coming, coming up? Coming up, we have, uh, well, let's see. I, I always do this wrong. I seriously do. Um, on our show tonight, we have fiction writer Kirsten Hall, and mm-hmm. then we have returning guest for author Carlos Colon, and he will be on the second half of the show. Um, so, so we, yeah, we do I, like Carlos. He's, he's, he's a, a great <laughs> friend of the show and a, a brilliant author as well. I'm, I'm so excited. He's, his new book lands tomorrow. So... Um, if I, you could say it lands the wrong side of tomorrow. Jim, you're a genius. <laughs> How good am I? Um, so, hey, let's, uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's bring our first guest on. Our first guest is fiction writer Kirsten Hall. Woo! <laughs> Hello. Hello, how are you? Hello, I'm, I'm average. How are you? <laughs> well, you're, you're drowning yourself, you know, so that's good. And I've had that happen before with the ice cube, and you have to sit there panicked and wondering yeah, okay. if it's going to move fast enough whether you can breathe or not. I've had that happen. It, it, it's, it's like a race, like one of those things, you know, is, is, <laughs> what's gonna, is it going to melt or am I going to choke? I mean, is, which is it to be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the 30 seconds, I run down my guest list of my funeral and who's going to show and who's not. And yeah. yeah, can I get the mariachi band booked fast enough? I mean, I, <laughs> yeah. I just I just want to, I just want to strip as a, a, a mark. They that's that's actually oh, a thing okay. in China. They have uh, funeral strippers, and I thought, what a great idea. What a terrific idea, you know, just like, yeah. <laughs> I haven't thought about that, no. No, oh, no. It, it, is, it is a thing that the, some of the authorities are trying to stop it, which I think is a bit miserable of them, but, um, you know, I, I don't know, a funeral sh- it shouldn't be, you know, it shouldn't be a miserable affair, just, you know, especially if it's someone you don't like. You know, we should go to funerals of people we don't like, and it should be a happy occasion. Well, exactly. You know, people just always. Oh, I'm, I'm, and it's funny. It's one of these things. I remember, you know, you know, sort of someone dies, and whether it's a famous person, or and you know, they, they interview the the people that knew them, and they're always, oh, he was, he was a salt of the earth. He was a nobody ever said he was a miserable bastard. He really was. Yeah, exactly. it was just Thank like, God. We, I, 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 yeah. yeah, I'm glad he's gone. Didn't like him. Didn't like him. <laughs> you know, but they, 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 they never do. They never do. It's just one of those yeah. things. Don't speak. They say don't oh, speak ill of the dead. But if, it, if you can if speak he, ill of anyone, it's a dead person. You can't slander the dead, that's for sure. So it should be always that. speak ill of the dead. You know, I did. I saw that in a post the other day. Somebody was talking about somebody who had passed away, and it was Michael Jackson they were talking about. They're like, you know what? Even if he was a great musician, he was still a pedophile. And so 
somebody who's like, don't speak ill of the dead. Well, you know, if it's true, it, you know, I don't know. I'm just thinking, just because he's dead doesn't mean he was, doesn't mean he was a good person. So, I mean, what can't? I, I just think that's yeah. ridiculous. If he, if, it if it is speak, one of those things. I mean, I yeah. suppose it's only, you know, although he technically he was never actually right, convicted, right. but it was like. Seriously, you know, I mean, enough people. Yeah. It's like R. R. Kelly, you know, they keep he keeps dodging it, and then there's, they've just thrown mm-hmm. another eleven charges at him. I mean, he, 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 it's one of those it. things, you know. It, it's just like I, I don't know, you know. But my, my, I like Michael Jackson's music. He was a very, very talented musician. But he, if he was, you know, molesting was children, good. then no, not a nice person. That's what, you don't do right. that. Right. Don't do right. it. And I, you know, yeah, yeah, one of those things. I mean, just, just I, again, it's a very much a distasteful subject. And but I, I don't get it. You know, I, I, ba- I barely like my own kids. Seriously, <laughs> I be- I'm seriously, I, I, yeah. they're all right. And I, I, I think I'm, I, I have a biological predisposition to, to, to you know, care for them, etc. But you know how people can no, it's, it's children for I think no, I, they're horrible. Children are I, horrible. The horrible. I things. believe I just. I just told my son today that I didn't like him, you know what I mean? And it was just a normal day. It wasn't like he was doing anything, you know, particularly, you know, annoying. But, you know, I don't like you. You know, I love him to oh, pieces. I do, yeah. but, I, I, yeah, they're just, you know. Eh. <laughs> I, I do. I, I like my, I like, I do actually like my kids. They're, 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 they're all right. I mean, there are times when I could merrily drown them in a bucket, but, um, you yeah, know, they're, you know, they're, they're all right. Today marks a week. My son has been out of school for the summer for a week today. And I have to say, you know, I, I have to be thankful that me and the boyfriend have survived the week. I am not sure how we're going to survive the rest of the summer, but um, we've survived a the week. week. Woo. That was, that was yeah. the first, first day. First day. But, but yeah, my, my, son, my son finished yesterday. My daughter finished today. Uh, um, yeah. And, yeah, 11 weeks. Wow. My son's first time behind the car, behind the, the wheel of a car, was a couple of days ago. How, how, uh, wow! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow! Oh boy, that's scary. Yeah, my my uh, one of our objectives this summer is to get my son driving. He's he's had a he's had a toot around in my Mustang, but you know, just around the big car parking lot. But um, yeah, we want to get. He he starts his he's, he starts his job uh, next week, so he, he he again very determined. He wants a car. Get a job. I'm going to save up. I'm going to get a car. Good on him. You know that's fantastic. Yeah, so um, that's great. So anywho, anyway, uh, Kirsten is here. To talk. She's uh, just to see you're a fiction writer. So I don't know if that's Christina being lazy or um, or what. You know, it covers a lot. It covers a lot. But she's here to talk about her book, Corner Confessions series, books one and two, um, mm-hmm. and. Eckstein has put a tagline here. Everyone has a secret. What's yours? I'm not going to say. I'm going to keep that to myself, <laughs> if you don't mind. Um, so, no. first on Kirsten, I mean, you know, fiction. I mean, what what the specific genres? Or are you multi-genre? I mean, where, where do you, where do you sit? Boy, I am everywhere on the planet. Uh, really, whatever falls out of my head is what I write about. Um, mm-hmm. I have a lot of interesting stories, to say the least. And actually. Aside from this Corner Confession series, I just a couple months ago donated a story to a, a murder crime anthology. And I got to tell you, I think I wrote the perfect murder. I'm just so nice. proud of myself. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed with myself. Of course, the people that know me, especially my other half, he reads it. He's like, uh huh. I'm like, is that great? <laughs> yeah, I could get away with this. So, so what? Yeah, you? <laughs> you, could, you really could. Just don't let anyone know that you read that story, and there you go. Anyway, right. um, but yeah, uh, Corner Confessions, really what this is all about is um, I went home one day, and, well, it occurred to me in a restaurant that everyone in that restaurant has a secret, you know, because mm-hmm. we all have our public personas, but then we, a lot of us, have interesting skeletons in the closet, and you think about what bartenders <laughs> here, if you don't know them and they don't know you and people start talking, good Lord, when once they start imbibing. Or mm. um, 
Yeah. I mean, people like to talk about themselves and they'll even open up more if there's no accountability because if nothing can get pinned on them, they can say whatever the hell goes on in their mind. And who's right. to say if it's true or not? No one knows. So mm-hmm. I went home and I, I came up with about 50 things I know about a variety of people in my life. Uh, a couple of these are secrets about me, but I'm not going to tell you which ones. Hello. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can read the book and then you can guess. Um, nice. Then I've got um, my immediate family, my extended family, um, what I've seen over the last, well, I was 45, 46 when I came up with these stories, so the first 45 years of my life. And, um, yeah, I, put, I, I know a lot of interesting things about people, don't you know? So yeah. I, of course, naturally changed the names and put it down on paper and then hit it under the title, Fiction. So right? there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I, I like it. Primarily yeah. so I don't have to go into the witness federal protection program. I can still go out <laughs> in the public. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> well, it, oh, it, is, great. it is it is funny what they say about, you know, uh fiction be or life being stranger than fiction, isn't that what they yeah. Oh, so um God, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm, I mean I, you know, I was thinking about it a couple months ago, actually, um, of, of just going through the stories in my mind, and I'm thinking, man, if I had to sit here and come up with this stuff, it would never happen. <laughs> I mean, I could right. come up with the stuff that I know. It's like, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy what people do. It just really Oh, is. yeah. Yeah. It's what they do. I see it's one of those things, you know, I think we've, We've said before on the show, you know, the, again, as, as a writer, you know, you just think you've come up with the most heinous thing possible, and then something you catch something on the news, and somebody's beating you. You know, it's like, yeah, how the yeah. hell? <laughs> In fact, funny enough, I was, again just just a bit unsafe. I was, I think, caught it on wherever uh, online newspaper. Um, the guy's just been jailed for something like three hundred and forty years for making his mm-hmm. children have sex with him his wife and his oh. dog and it's like oh dear oh dear no 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 that's just horrible a horrible person and it's nice he's got that kind of you know <laughs> that kind of sentence that's brilliant yeah because you know, yeah when they add everything up you know it's like you know you're going away for you know they said only he'll be eligible for role in in so like the year yeah, <laughs> twenty-two fifty yeah. or something like. Oh, then wow. he can look for he can look forward to that. Then he'll be counting <laughs> down the days to that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, in in my books, for example, the uh, first couple, the the first book has got fourteen confessions. It ranges anywhere from. Uh, pay it forward, feel good stuff, all the way to a mercenary. I have a contract killer in this book, and pretty much everything in between. Um, right. Then I, yeah. Then I've got in the lives we live, which is the storyline continues. It takes place in the back corner of a coffee shop where people confess their skeletons, hence corner confessions. But the second book has got 16 confessions in it, and they have to do with um, lies that are, well, all of these are still going on to this day, but um, you know that theory of why fix one ain't broke, although it's broken, but if you hide it under the rug and you can't see it, then it's not very broken, is it? Um, right. A lot of small town politics, good old boys club, greed, there's even um, a story in here uh, in a town about 12 miles away from where I live that there's a natural gas leak that is being covered up in an old building. And should the celestial beings ever line upright, it's going to blow a town off the map of Minnesota. Wow. I, I drive around that. <sighs> I drive around that town. We don't go through that town. Anywho. Yeah, so I mean, there's, you know, it's 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 all cover up. It's the good old boys club. It's the small town corruption. It's it's not mm-hmm. broken and it doesn't affect me, so it's not my problem. So there you go. Yeah, I mean, there's and and then the third one that comes out here in 2020, I'll have the last 20 confessions, and it's entitled "And the Burdens We Keep," and it's it's a darker, darker thing because I mean, when you're keeping burdens 
it's it plays on your emotions and it ruins you so it's it's a darker um there there is not put it this way these books remind people that life is not all unicorns and glitter you know so <laughs> yeah. yeah i don't i don't yeah. write um happy bouncy i mean i put a little happy bouncy but then something comes in and just really ruins it so i i know it's it's funny because when i um was putting together the uh the information for the show i was like romance you know romance author and and then i was like what genre you're like well definitely not romance <laughs> i was like oh yeah sorry. No, <laughs> i thought there, that was there's no yeah. romance <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I want to hear more. Do you have a uh, do you have a reading for us? Uh yes, I do. Um, let me just open here. All right. Um, I will set up the scene here. Like I said, the um, the uh, confessions take place in the back corner of a coffee shop, and mm -hmm. Steph is the main character. Um, she got much like I did sitting in the restaurant, I just kind of looked around and realized, oh my gosh, everyone has a secret. So the book starts off with Steph doing some people watching in the coffee shop, looking around and goes, oh my God, everyone here has a secret. So it's it's really a lot of me sitting in there. But anyway, um, she has got a particular person she is talking to who's confessing stuff. Her name is Stella and she happens to be a dominatrix. And so um, this um, dominatrix is getting this off her chest, if you will, because she is set to inherit a lot of money, comes from a well-to-do Catholic family, but she keeps the secret from her family because, well, she wants the money. Let's all be realistic here. And um, so she just wants to talk about it, get it off her chest, and then be like, okay, I told my secret to someone, and there you go. Anyway, all right, so starting off here, um, kind of in the middle of the conversation, Stella has been telling Stephanie, um, or Steph here, um, about what her typical week is like and her different appointments. And mm -hmm. um, so into the conversation, Stella starts, very well, on Fridays, there's a rotation of few people throughout the month who enjoy flogging, spanking, fire play, knife play, rope, latex bondage, that kind of stuff, or some who find interesting things in books or off the internet and want to try something different. Should, should I ask what the different stuff is, if you'd like? Pausing for another moment while she finished off her coffee, Steph decided to resort back to the self-directed growing list of terminology to look up on Google when she got home that evening. You know, on second thought, never mind, I'll, I'll use my imagination. Okay, well, there's one more type of dominating I provide. Do you want to hear about that? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're here to let you air out your secrets, and I have to say you definitely have some secrets, Steph chuckled, wondering what could be coming next. I also provide the service of what I refer to as captivation. People can stay one or two nights through the weekend in captivation at my house. Steph had already heard quite a bit, and her mind was running wild. When she heard the word captivation, however, Steph nearly burst out with laughter. She gracefully managed to keep it at bay with just a smile. You captivate them like an animal at a zoo? Steph, excuse me, Stella pursed her lips and gave a reprimanding look, all business again. Yes, I have a few cages around the house so I can keep an eye on them. Most of them wear a gimp hood for both sensory deprivation and to conceal their identity, but some choose not to wear it. For those who choose to go without the hood, they are required to wear a blindfold at all times. Picking up on the change of tone, Steph interjected with, I'm sorry, I didn't expect the word captivate. I, I understand, Stella nodded calmly, and then continued in a professional manner. Either way, though, they stay in their cages except for eating, which they do in the dungeon out of dog food bowls, or when they have to use the bathroom. At night, they sleep in a cage underneath our bed. During the day, they're either out in the great room or in the dungeon if I, have, if I happen to have an extra appointment over for, for some play. And that's about it. Do you have any questions? Wanting to make sure she hadn't offended Stella, Steph cleared her throat. I, I truly am sorry. I seriously didn't expect to hear that word. You took me by surprise. 
actually, you've had me surprised this entire appointment, and I guess my surprise level just bubbled over when you mentioned your last service. I understand, Stella said, putting her unused spoon and napkin into her empty coffee mug. No need to apologize. I feel I should, though, Steph shook her head and placed a hand on the table. I seriously wasn't laughing at you. I, I think maybe I just, maybe I'm nervous. No, nervous isn't the right word. Stella interrupted Steph and put her hand on top of Steph's hand. It's really okay. I'm sure you, turn the page, are nervous. I make people nervous. I know that. And I understand that what I told you isn't the everyday banter you're used to either. It's okay. It's, it's really okay. I understand and I accept your apology. Everything is good. All right, Steph said, pulling her hand out gently underneath. Excuse me, hand out from underneath Stella's hand gently. As long as you know I wasn't disrespecting you. But, but if it helps, I can honestly say you've had the wildest confession so far. I'm sure you've definitely heard some great secrets, Stella said, standing and extending her hand for a shake. Thank you again for this opportunity. It was a pleasure meeting you, Miss Stephanie. Steph stood up and met Stella's hand with a confident handshake. You're welcome, and thank you as well. Actually, I do have one more question. And what might that be? Stella asked with her devious smile. How did you find out about this little experiment of mine? One of my clients frequents this coffee shop and told me of your idea. I thought it was interesting, so I had one of my houseboys stop in and sign me up. Ah, Steph said, wondering to herself who it could be. And I can see from the look on your face you're trying to figure out who that person is. Would I be correct? Is it that obvious? Steph smiled sheepishly. Yes, and I cannot tell you. Privacy is of the utmost importance in my line of work, Stella reminded Steph, turning around and heading toward the door. Of course, Steph said to herself quietly, watching Stella navigate effortlessly through the tables and chairs and out the door in her four-inch crocodile heels. Oh, wow, that that sounds so cool. <laughs> that was great. I can't yeah, that was I can't great. Imagine I it. That. Yeah. There's there's um there's about four or five more days of Stella's week if you buy the book. <laughs> nice. <laughs> she is, I think, my longest. Um, yeah, I think she is. She's like twenty seven pages long wow. chapter in that book. Yeah. Wow. I. I I want to know more about these uh, people that are, you know, kept in in cages and uh, and they they <laughs> on their own. I mean, they want to have this done to them. It's oh, yeah. just so bizarre. Uh, <laughs> a lot of it is uh, humiliation. It's the sensory oh. deprivation. It's um, the captivation. It's the um, um, uh, being vulnerable. Um, mm. And, and a lot of times it's for people who are often in a controlling position in their job or in their real life or whatever the case may be, they like to give up the power mm. and do this. Yeah, it's it's a psychological <laughs> thing for a lot of people. And then, of course, you know, um, you have a lot of, um, oh, gosh. And then, well, you have the people that... Um, do the masochistic end of things, and obviously Stella is very sadistic um, the rest of the week. <laughs> That's in the book. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's, and then of course, sometimes it's for the sex, a lot of the times it's not. It's more of a psychological thing. It, mm -hmm. it really depends from person to person and what gets them, and there you go. Yeah, I like I like that. I, I find the whole thing, you know, fascinating. They like say a lot of S and M is not about sex at all. You know, it, yeah. it is about you know um, relinquishing control. It's about you know, like you said, the whole psychological thing. And uh, I've known I've known a dominatrix or two in the past. And again, back to, it, back to the secrets. <laughs> um, and yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's. You know, and they, they a lot the professionals. You know, they have clients who go um, really just so they can be be dominated. That's their thing, but it's not a sexual thing, which is great. I think absolutely fascinating. Yep. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting. 
oh, I don't know if you want to call it subculture, a different world, and and you know, and it's interesting too. Um, a lot of people, I don't know the percentage, but put it this way, uh, the world is not all straight laced and missionary. I'll just point that out. Anyhow. It is not. It is not. No. No, no, it's not. <laughs> no, 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 no. And it, it would no. be it would, it would be dull if it was. To be well, honest, right. I, it would and be actually, dull. think about it. On the flip side, it would the oddity is to be straight laced and missionary. That's mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. cool. I, I think <laughs> that's that, that is the the slim percentage. Because mm -hmm. it's sure, I don't think it is. I, I, think, the I think they they don't exist. I mean, it's one of those things. The more straight laced and missionary they appear, the more perverted they tend to be behind oh, closed doors. Yeah. One one oh, fine. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a generalization. Yeah. I mean, you know, I wasn't going to mention the Catholic Church, but you know, since though you brought no. it up, you know, they're, <laughs> they're pious and they're they're um, celibate and blah de blah de blah. Bullshit they are. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, again, I rest my case. I rest my case. Yeah. No, no I, I don't need to say yeah. more. I re I'm retiring now. <laughs> I, I, will tell you, I will tell you that from my people I know in that community, because um, like I said, these are real people. That mm -hmm. I, and Marifal, she knows she has a chapter. She likes her chapter. But anyway, um, of the people that are in that community, they all 100% agree there is a certain political convention that any city it goes into, uh, the ones that usually uh, carry on about uh, women's bodies and how they should be controlled, are the, the freakiest, mm -hmm. most money-spending freaks yeah. on the planet when it comes mm -hmm. to conventions that um, madams and dominatrixes and stuff will flock to those convention cities and they will make yeah. money hand over fist oh, on God. those wow. people. Wow. Yep. I can, that I believe. That I believe, yes. Mm -hmm. so, d d if, if, if any are listening, if they can listen in, uh, just dirty mm -hmm. people. Dirty, dirty people. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> I hate to say this, Kirsten, but it is time for our first segment to be over. And um, okay. you have to promise to come back and see us, though. You said you have a book coming out in 2020? Yep, yep. And yeah. The Burdens We Keep, that will be the book three of this three-book series. And then I won't know anything about anyone, and, and then there you go. <laughs> I'll be out there. Awesome. Well, we, we, we need, you, we need you back then. Yes, okay. definitely. Okay, well, that that would be fabulous. And and you've got my website and all that good fun stuff. I do. Yeah. Okay. Tell, 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 our listen, tell our listener where they can find you. Okay. Well, the website is khallbooks.com. So K-H-A-L-L-B-O-O-K-S.com. And all of my books are on there and then all the links to where you can find them. Awesome. I can't wait to have you back, Kirsten. Well, thank you so much for inviting me and having me on. I know. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. And, um, yeah, have a great rest of your evening. Thanks. You guys, too. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Um, Bye-bye. We will okay. be right back after these these messages. Radio Show is sponsored by Hellbound Books, purveyors of all manner of dark fiction. You can find the publisher along with links to all their available works across platforms at hellboundbookspublishing.com. Hellbound Books is proud to be the first in the indie publishing business with a very own app on both Google Play and the App Store. In the mood for something steamy to read, check out new erotica author Jennifer Lynn's website at jenniferlynnerotica.com. You can find James at his website, www.jameslongmore.com, and Xtina has an author page found on the Help on website. Don't forget to follow the Panic Room Radio Show on social media. Our Facebook page, unofficial, the Panic Room Radio Show, Twitter at Panic Room Radio, our YouTube channel, the new Panic Room Radio Show, and come visit our website at www.panicroomradio.com. <laughs> Want your kiss, cause 
I just can't miss With a good love charm like you Come on and be my little good love charm Are you sweet delight? I want a good love charm Hanging on my arm I do have, I do have To hope, I do hope To mine Don't want a silver dollar Rabbit's foot on a string A happiness and your warm caress No rabbit's foot can bring Come on and be my little good luck chum Are you sweet delight? I want a good luck chum Hanging on my arm I do have, I do have to hope, to hope, to night. Ah, 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 oh yeah. Ah, 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 tonight. If I found a lucky penny, I'd toss it across the bay. Love is worth all the gold on earth No wonder that I say Come on and be my little good luck charm Are you sweet delight? I want a good luck charm Hanging on my arm I do have, I do have I do hope, I do hope tonight Ah, uh, ah uh, Welcome back to part two. And we's back. Hopefully people can hear us. I mean, I'm having a good time anyway. How about you, Xtina? No, it would appear it's just me having a good time, which I, I and I am, I have to say. Um, I think what we're going to... We, riddled with technical issues this evening, which is... Um, challenging but um hey what the hell i'm, I'm, I'm it's me i'm having a good old it, it, it is it's fun i'll tell you what i am going to do here's what i am going to do because we've not had him for a while we've not had, we'll, we'll bring donald on i think this is what we're going to do right now in a number of states the laws allow a baby to be born from his or her mother's womb in the ninth month it is wrong it has to change <laughs> And that man opens his mouth and makes a tit of himself. So uh, somebody feels this. To, where did you go? You guys you just, you just I, literally came by and you just buggered. I, I think you just wandered. I think you wandered off for a, for a wee. I think you've gone you for know, a wee. A maybe, maybe, maybe even a poo. You know, it's a funny story. Occasionally, X Tina does something really, really silly. Well, not occasionally. It's like all the time. Occasionally, but um, mm. no. So mm -hmm. I'm listening to the music and I'm bopping it and I have the the button pushed. I muted myself so that, you know, I'm, nobody can hear me singing and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as the music starts to fade and, you know, we come back from break, I, I'm trying to hit the unmute button and instead I just hang right up. <laughs> so that was all me. Well, I, <laughs> yeah. to be fair, I mean, for, for the number of times I've, I've pressed the wrong button and played the, the startup music <laughs> instead of the, the commercials, <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's that sort of lost track of how many times that's happened but um, <laughs> it, 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 i think it's all part of the no, fun <laughs> it's just like <laughs> it is what's going to happen this week exactly that's it's like a yeah, game. what's going to screw what, what's going to screw up this week but it's um yeah it's like it's i, I like it i just so it's so so irreverent and <laughs> makes it exciting just adds that little bit of edge it's i a, think so um it does a bit, I mean, it's a bit like the i mean that's how dull my life has become you know when <laughs> somebody might press the wrong button on the show or you know I've, I've got this bit of ice stuck in my throat you know is it going to melt in time for me to not choke to death or not and it's that, exciting yeah. that's the exciting part of my day and, and I, I really need to address this I really need seriously to get out more um, yes you do 
too. <laughs> but uh, it, will, will it happen? Will it ever happen? I don't know. I don't know. But um, <laughs> so, um, and you know, I'm, I'm excited. I have to say, um, he, he said, <laughs> not in that way. <laughs> naturally because that that would be wrong that would be wrong listener in fact but uh, nobody wants to imagine sit there listening to the show and, and imagining me within a, a mighty erection i have to say so um, it's uh you know i'm ex i'm excited about our next guest he's he's, he's been a He's, he's a, a great friend of the show, uh, a terrific writer, one, one, one of the, the, the best, um, uh, obviously not as good as me, but one of the best, the best horror authors, uh, and one of, one of Hellbound Book's very, very first signings as well, and he, he stuck with us through thick and thin, um, and he's bringing out, he's bringing out, brought out his, his sequel to um, Sangre, uh, the Colour of Dying, which is Sangre, The Wrong Side of Tomorrow, hence my superb pun at the beginning of the show, listener. Um, and I, I think, I'm, and I'm going to bring you on, and to hell with XD, you know, I'm, I'm going to bring you on. So we, we've, we've got the one and only, the inimitable, Carlos Colon. <laughs> Carlos, how are you there? I've been driving over mountains even through the valleys too I've been traveling that day I've been running all the way baby trying to get to you When I read your loving letters then my heart began to sing There were many miles between us but this didn't mean a thing I just had to reach you, baby In spite of all that I've been through I get driving that day I get running all the way Baby, trying to get to you Woo! Carlos, thank you for that. It was awesome. As I said, I, I would have sung along had I known the words, but I didn't. Well, so, you were playing uh, some rock and Billy, so I figured, you know, uh, you, know you got me in the mood. I, I have selected the tunes this week, especially for you, to make you feel warm and snugly and at home. So, anywho, <laughs> anywho, so great, great to have you back on the show. It's been, it's been far too long, far too. I know you, you've yeah. been incredibly busy with um, uh, in, the, in the world of Nikki and Sangre and TV and movies and uh, graphic novels, and uh, you, 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 ba you barely stopped. I, I follow you avidly on. Facebook and this, I don't know. Do, do you ever have time to sleep? <laughs> it's funny, it's funny you should ask. Funny, uh, I'm on my uh, tenth Seagram, so hopefully that'll uh, help me. But uh, oh, wow. and it's also the reason I read a couple of bad course. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Nikki has really uh, developed uh, uh, the he's won the affection of so many people that. Uh, you know, uh, as you might remember, it was originally my intention to leave the first story as it was. You know, even though the ending was a little open, I felt that that was a perfect ending for the story. But uh, it, it, almost everyone that read it said, no, 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 we want more. We want to see what goes on after that. And that's what this novel is. I mean, it, it picks up right where the other one left off. Wow. You know, I have to say that I, I, I'm probably in a weird um, category because I did not read The Color of Dying, and, uh, but I did read um, your, the, the sequel, and I can't imagine what comes before that because, I mean, it is such a... Um, uh, it, you don't have to have read The Color of Dying to appreciate the sequel. Um, so, but I, I, I'm... Because it stands on its own, you know, it, re it really does. So I'm like, what, what happened before? So I... And it's it's horrible because I I want to read it so bad, but I don't have I hardly have any time. So for the past like week or so, I've been carrying around the paperback like any any you know any free moments I have, I'm going to read and and uh, but so I, I look kind of sad just carrying around a paperback, you know. But um I I do I I love Nikki. I I thought that was a great book and um I I can't wait to get the paperback myself of a yeah so yay. 
Is there anything else? Yeah, it's like this is this is a, this is Extina again, shamelessly, shamelessly <laughs> begging for a freebie. <laughs> you know, just just oh, tell, oh, Carlos, tell, yeah, well, you tell know, him no. Uh, Extina, buy she, buy she, the she, book she, yourself. Buy it yourself. Well, I felt the greedy. Ex Tina and I have an arrangement because I was a big fan of her poetry and her new book, which I loved. You know, so uh, we have a little bit of, uh, of an arrangement. As as you know, I'm a big fan of uh, both of your writings. You know, I I, I think uh, James should be committed, but you know, I'm glad that he hasn't been committed. So you know, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I, I am a big fan of both your writings, but uh, yeah, Ex Tina and I have a little bit of an arrangement uh, regarding that. But that being yeah. said, uh, it, it was also kind of interesting that uh, uh, that she enjoyed it so much, not having read the first book, because that was a big concern of mine. Uh, so much of the first book infirm, informs the second book that uh, I was concerned as to whether someone who didn't read the first book could, could appreciate it or not. And apparently, uh, Extina has proven that she, you could. You can't you can't yes, enjoy the second right. book. I think you'll enjoy it better if you read the first book, but uh, you know, uh but uh but, but she was able to enjoy it. What what uh let, let, let's let, let's talk about the uh the, the, the big elephant in the room, which is of course uh vampire books. I mean I mean if it, I, I can't think of a more tired genre uh, over the last 10, 15 years. I started writing the original Sangre probably about 20 years ago before everybody went uh, nuts with the vampire books. And now it's like, you know, it's, 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 it's the, I, I hesitate to use the V word because it's become so overdone. Everybody in the grandmother has either read or tried to write a, grand, a vampire novel. It's almost comical. And it's fallen into the dime store novel category. So I felt the only way to bring new life to it was to make it feel as real as possible. Make it about the people, not the monsters. Make it about real feelings, because too often the characters in these novels, they're treated like pegs on a board, almost like chess pieces. And uh, the characters don't feel real. So uh, I, I, I think and I hope that I accomplished that with both novels. Definitely, definitely. Um, I was wondering, is um, is this the end for Nikki, or is or is there is there going to be more for him? <laughs> uh, it could be, it could be. I want to see what kind of response I get, you know, because I mean, I, I would like to write other things too, and I don't have. A, I'm like you, I don't have a heck of a lot of time, to be honest with you. But uh, but uh, I'd like to see uh, what kind of response uh, this one gets. Uh, so far, the response has been uh, pretty positive. Uh, but uh, I, I want to see some sales. Otherwise, I want to try something else. You know what I mean? Yeah, but but yeah. the ending leaves it perfectly, I think, that it can either go on or it can end right there. You know, sometimes I, you know, I, I do understand what you're saying about, you know, it depends on sales and everything. But sometimes characters just won't leave you alone. And I definitely think that Nikki is one of those loud characters that is probably not easy to get away from, you know. I, 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 I think he, obviously, you know, I've been following the cross two books now. You know, he's sort of, he's got, a, he's got a life all of his own now. I don't, I don't think Carlos could leave, <laughs> leave, leave him in this. It's ironic. Well, he you want a life of his own, right? He's dead. <laughs> And <laughs> yes, I you, thank you for correcting me. Yeah, he, he's got a death of his own, <laughs> oh, an undead of his <laughs> own, I guess I should say. Yeah, but right. you know, he, he's he's such a a, a a great character. Obviously, he's very flawed. Um, you know, his circumstance was sort of um, thrust upon him, literally, in, in in some respects. You know that um, I think Carlos writes him so well that he, he's. he's it's like an old friend. It's great picking up the second book. It was. It was like visiting an old friend. So um, I, I hope. I hope there's. I mean, obviously, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd like to read Carlos's other stuff, but um, I hope. I hope it's not the last of Mickey. I'd love to. I'd love to see more of him. Yeah. Well, I, I do have a story in mind for a third novel. That's a secret. I do have a th story. I do have a title, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. I do have a story in mind for a third novel. But I want to see, uh, you know, the, the, the excitement. I, I also want to see uh, if we can get this thing going uh, on the screen. We've been working on that. It's been difficult. Uh, the uh, issue, as uh, it always is, is money, and mm -hmm. uh, you know. Uh, 
but 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 I do. I will say this about Nikki is uh, he kind of writes himself, man. It's it's like I just <laughs> sit in the room and he and he does take over and uh, and he writes himself. It's it, it's a fun character. Well, what 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 you need to do is you know to, to get him on the screen clearly is, is to. Um, you know, write in Godzilla or Transformers <laughs> or no. uh, D DC Marvel characters. Guaranteed, they will throw money at you and over it. Set it in China, and they will literally. They will. Throw, that's what you need to do. The third book is Nicky has to go to China, um, <laughs> and, and they will. They will. They will throw you. Know, he goes to China to battle Godzilla, um, who's battling a Transformer. Um, I mean, you know, I, we, we, we joke, but again, you, you look, I mean, there's some terrific ideas that should be up there. And what do we get? We get, you know, the, 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 another Marvel movie. We get a remake. We get a reboot. We get this. And it's the same old shite. But there's so, yes. honestly, because we, 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 live, we, 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 we inhabit the independent um, literature market. And there's some brilliant, brilliant stuff. I mean, some of it mine, I have to say, that really needs to be, you know, up on mm -hmm. the screen, you know. And I'm, yeah. I'm sort of encouraged to the likes of whatever you've got, like Netflix, you've got Hulu, you've got um, Apple are getting involved in it now, Amazon, who are providing a platform for good We've independent to them movies. Um, and you know it, it should be opening it up. It should be, but it's like you say, Carl. It's still about money, and people are reluctant to put the money into something that may or may not make it. Whereas they can put the money into, oh, it's another Avengers film. We know damn well we're going to get our money back plus interest. And it's a shame. Yeah. It's absolutely it's crippling. Um, you know, creating. Yeah, what? It, 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 it's it's canned. It's canned. It's canned entertainment. It what is you're talking mm -hmm. about. It's canned Entertainment, you know, it's it, 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 it's like a cookie cutter uh, type of entertainment, which uh, really doesn't give you any room for creativity. And yeah. uh, it's it's ironic because that's what they think of people who haven't read Sangre, you know, uh, and, and and maybe they read the uh, synopsis or something like that. They might think that's what it is. They might think mm -hmm. that we've that I, what I wrote here is canned entertainment, but it really isn't. It's it's for a novel that involves such fantasy. It's very grounded, and uh, yeah. it's also two novels at once, uh, especially the second one, which Christina read as well. Uh, you, you, you have a coming-of-age story, and then you have the, the, the modern-day noir story. So, it, you know, it, it's, it's two, at one, two novels at once that does, I think, come together into a very satisfying, and I think... An, I may mean, say so myself, like an unforgettable ending. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why I'm so anxious to read The Color of Dying. It's because I want to know what I missed, you know, when, when we do get the flashbacks of Nikki when he was younger. I'm I'm just, the whole time I'm thinking, is this a story that we, you know, we visit more of in the, the first book, or do we get more of this in the first book? So, because I, I love the, the, um, the flashbacks from when he was younger. I'm really... I was all into those. I was. I was like, these are so cool. And I could have had a whole book, I think, of, of the flashback scenes. That was... Uh, I'm actually I, I toying the idea. Because you said that, uh, Christina, uh, uh, I'm actually toying the, uh, with the idea of taking the grounded... Uh, to answer your question, yes, uh, uh, the first uh, novel does follow the same kind of pattern. But I'm actually mm -hmm. tempted and had been considering taking the grounded stories and combining those into one novel. I think it All would right. actually work pretty well, you know, especially for those who don't want to read about vampire, you know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> I, I, I think uh, that the novels, both of them, have covered as many emotions and ways of storytelling possible in these stories. There's drama, there's humor, there's action, there's horror. And I don't rob the readers of the fun vampire stuff. You get the stakes in the heart. You get the not appearing in mirrors and stuff like that. You get all that fun stuff. But mm -hmm. it feels... The, the, if, if, I, if I were to describe it, I would say, like, if someone doesn't like vampire books, they won't feel like they're reading one. But if someone right. does like them, they'll find themselves reading one that, like, they've never read before. Right. 
That I, I totally agree with that. And, you know, I would never give away any kind of spoiler at all, but I do want to say that ending was amazing to me. I just, I read that and I, I had chills. I loved the ending. I thought it was perfect. Um, I, I loved the book so much. I did. Um, and you Thank have you. a, you have a, you have an excerpt picked out to read for us, don't you? Yes, I do. I do. <laughs> and, and I'm not a good reader. Uh, I, I know that uh, the uh, I, I've been tough on you when you tried to have someone for the uh, uh, audio book. Uh, <laughs> but uh, and I'm not a good. That person was very talented, but uh, he just wasn't. He didn't sound like any of Puerto Rican. But I do have uh, an excerpt, uh, and uh, the what I chose was. One of the grounded scenes, one of the coming of age scenes, uh, basically Nikki losing his virginity. It's all yours. It's all mine. You give me the, the you give me the uh, platform here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. The, air, the airwaves belong to Carlos. Go for it. All right. Here goes. Hey, let's face it. My track record of relating to women by the time I reached 18 resembled the New York Mets' one loss record in the early 1960s. Hell, my own mother died barely even to tolerate being around me. After that, my voyeuristic episode was Stacey Pepper, and you could have branded an L on my forehead with a cattle iron without it looking out of place. I earned that motherfucker, and I learned, I earned it hard. It's probably why I interpreted the pensive gazes Carmen, the super's wife, gave me as sympathetic. She sure played the part well, pitying the suddenly un unattended teen as he tried to figure out how to hold on to the apartment all by himself. Her husband, Gilberto, had been a good friend to me after Papi left, always being supportive of me while Mommy drank herself to sleep on a nightly basis, presumably hoping to wake up to a world where Papi and Danny were back and I was the one that was gone. Hilberto even encouraged Carmen to invite me over for dinner after school every once in a while. That's when I started noticing her leering uh, me across the table. Even though I was a month or so from being a legal adult, Hilberto looked the other way as I remained at the apartment on my own, refusing to move out to live with other relatives. And though he never verbalized it, he nodded with approval as I took a job to cover the controlled rent and registered for college at Hunter. I was becoming a man, and I was doing it on my own. Privately, he might have been curious as to why I wasn't taking advantage of the situation and inviting the little feminine company to join me. Maybe he thought I was still mourning, or maybe he thought I was just a good stand-up guy. Sorry, Gilberto, stand-up guy I was not. Since Carla was the super's wife, she often took liberties with a spare apartment key, and I would often come home from school to find my apartment tidied up, my dishes done, and sometimes even my laundry folded. She wanted to help, she said, since I was alone and concentrating on my studies. And though I was a little weirded out, I have to admit that it was nice to sometimes not have those little things to worry about. There were even times when I would find little treats in, my, in the fridge like pasteles and flan. By throwing myself into studies and the job, I had gotten, uh, and the job I had gotten at a local insurance uh, and tax preparer's office, I never really found myself going through a mourning period. School and work occupied my mind sufficiently enough that by the time I got home and crashed into bed, the only thoughts that squeezed into this freshman virgin's head were visions of Channel 47's Edie Chacon giving me a bronchi with a giant ass cheeks. What can I say? I was a sick fuck. In late October of my freshman year, midterms were kicking my ass. On the last Friday of that month, I came home after 8.30 p.m. exhausted from school and work. All I wanted to do was just throw myself into bed with my clothes on. Without turning on the light, I dropped my book bag on the floor and took off my coat, tossing it in the same general area. Oye, oye, de estar haciendo tanto reguero, said the frisky voice from my bed, ordering me not to make such a mess. Although I quickly identified the voice as Carmen, it startled me enough that I shouted and flicked on the light. Carmen, not one to miss her cue, lifted the covers that were draped over her when the room lit up, unveiling her own natural self. Avance, she said, rushing me in Spanish. She only had 90 minutes before Gilberto returned home from his domino game. Now, Carmen was not the most attractive woman in the world. She was maybe 20 pounds overweight, which I didn't mind because I liked ladies that were big and curvy. But while that in itself might have kept her off the cover of Cosmopolitan magazine, her cocky-colored cigarette-stained teeth and her punch pungent 
Café con leche breath would have steered most discerning gen- eligible men into other directions. Carmen also had a little bit of a mustache that, all, that often made one feel like he was making out with Omar Sharif. Also worth mentioning was the fact that her legs were hairy and led up to a mound of fuzz that resembled the top of Kramer's head being squeezed between her thighs. Anyone who watches Seinfeld will understand what I mean. Despite the not-so-appetizing picture I described, when Carmen raised those sheets, I popped the woody and nearly broke my zipper. Carmen saw the, ex- the enthusiastic bulge ready to break out and moaned, ooh, happy to see such a willing participant. Carmen grabbed my wrist and pulled me into the sheets with her. Unfortunately for her, the 90 minutes she allotted were far more than we needed. I finished with 89 to spare. But virgin or not, Carmen wasn't about to let me off the hook that easily. She pointed, toward Cra- pu- she pointed towards Kramer and put me to work. When I did, her thighs pressed so hard against my ears, I was halfway expecting my head to crack open like a walnut. Once my task was done, Carmen got dressed and told me that she would return the next day. She said I needed to practice. And practice we did at least five times a week over the next two years. To this day, I finally look back at those sessions as the best sex I ever had. I wow. That's I- I- great. <laughs> I, I, that's so evocative. So evocative. It's, it's funny if that reminds me. I mean, going back a few years ago now, I, I, I'm not a big fan of, of pubic hair, as, as anybody who knows me will know. <laughs> um, and I, I it's some, some woman I'd met in a club blah blah blah, blah. I, went, I went to uh, went to her house like the, the following weekend and you know to do you know things that you know grown up things I thought and she was so <laughs> she was so hairy down below I thought she had on a pair of mohair panties no, no. I have never <laughs> seen so much and it was like it, they were they were like it was like I, I just like no I'm not I'm not no no <laughs> Oh, and you, I mean, you don't, you don't want to appear rude, and just could you, could you just sort of trim that a little bit? I just, you know, I, I'm afraid. I was, I was afraid of it. <laughs> oh, just, yeah. just when but no, that was that was great. It was be- beautifully right, Carlos. I mean, to be fair, you you should narrate both both books actually for audio book, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously, no, no. I know we 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 are struggling to find just the right narrator. I think I think we found him. So I think, <laughs> You're I right. think Carlos right. is our new narrator. There we go. <laughs> I chose that excerpt because uh, I, I I wanted to uh, you know re- remind readers or potential readers uh, that there was a lot of humor in the book. Uh, yeah. and, and, and let's face it, between the first b- both stories, there is a lot of tragedy and very morbid moments in the mm-hmm. story. It didn't have that humor. It would be pretty difficult to read, I think. Right, right. Well, I, I, I think you, know you need to, even in, like you say, even in the darkest horror, there's always that grain of humor. You have to have it. I mean, because, not just because, like you say, so it's not just all grim, but I think because, you know, that, that is life, you know, and you reflect life incredibly well because there's, in everything, no matter, you know, whatever is going on, there's always that, that dark bit of humour, um, and it's good. To, it's good to capture that, and I think you capture that incredibly well. I like I said, with Xtina, I, I love the flashback. I mean, there's there's one flashback yeah. in in, the, in Sangre, the first one that, that it, it literally tears your heart out. Um, but yeah. you, again, the flashbacks, and I'm guessing there's a fair bit of Carlos Colon in those flashbacks. Um, but you just bring them uh-huh. to life so wonderfully. You know, I, I, I they're the best. You should do a whole book of flashbacks. Yeah, I would love um, that. Yeah, this is childhood. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. There, there, there were experiences in my life that I did sneak into the book, and a lot of people say like, "Oh, you're Nikki," and I said, "You know, I, I wish I was that much of a badass, but I'm not." You know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> uh, I, I'm a pussy cat, uh, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, if you're trying to make something feel real, then heck, you know, uh, take some experiences from your own life and uh, sort of like you know, uh, mold it into the story, which I did with some experiences. And uh, not the super's wife. I, I have to say that because my wife might be listening, you know. Uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, but but you do take some of these things that you witness and, 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 and you can write about it so realistically because you, you saw it happen, you know. Right. And, 
and that's what I think people love so much about Nicky is that he feels real, you know. And then when you go into this exciting uh, uh, paranormal vampire story, you know, you're taking somebody that you feel you you know, you know, you you're going with somebody that you feel you know into that story, so it doesn't feel as crazy. You know, uh, let's, let's face it. You know, the paranormal stuff can be a little bit like what? But you know, if right. if Britain right, you know, it, it it can. You know, Stephen King is great at that. You know, Stephen King is great at taking concepts that like, you know, are you out of your mind? You know, but he makes it feel real. <laughs> it's real. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And um, it, you know, we were talking earlier about uh, vampires. And um, what is your favorite like vampire story or book or movie? Like, what uh, what what do you like? Okay, I'm glad you asked me that, Christina. Uh, Book-wise, and uh, I, I'm, I, you know, you might have read this one, and you might see the the, the 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 tone similarity, except that it didn't have the humor that mine had. Book-wise, uh, let the right one in. You familiar with that one? Oh, I am. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Great movie as well. Both, in fact, the the Swedish original movie was, I think, by far the better one, but. Um, yeah, so you really see that, that took a vampire story and it did something with it. I think what people are fed up with is that people take vampire stories and they don't, they don't do anything with it. They just follow like a, a by the numbers routine. But yeah. uh, let yeah. the right one in dealt with an issue that was never really dealt with before. Uh, and uh, I don't want to mention what it is because. I kind of have a similarity in the terms of what happens in the second book. Because remember, and this is the key, the, the vampires, they don't age. I mean, you right. know, they, they do age, but they stay re looking the same. So yeah. Yeah. I like the way Let the Right One In address that. Movie-wise, yeah. uh, the original Fright Night, that was so uh, much fun. I love that movie. Oh, the yeah. Roddy McDowell, yeah, that was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. That was brilliant. And, and, and what, what was great about it was that it was funny as hell, and when yeah. it wanted to be scary, it was scary. Yeah, yeah. No, I definitely agree. That was, well, what, did you, what did you think to the remake? I didn't think the remake was bad, but it wasn't close to the original. Exactly. Yeah, they they, they, they I, took, I, all, they took all the humor out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the humor was what made it work so well. That mm -hmm, one, yeah. and if, if you, you remember American Werewolf from London, when, oh yeah, both those movies um, mixed humor and horror perfectly. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, 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 and I love what they what they did with it. Uh, with uh, the Sangre novels, and again, I added the humor, but what I wanted to do was make it feel as real as possible, and no mo movie or book felt more real than The Exorcist. That oh, felt God. real yeah. as hell. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was scary. I think the more real you make something, the scarier it is. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, I think that... Um, and if you can make something feel real, if you can make somebody, you know, a reader say, oh, you you must be Nikki... Because it feels so real to them. They can imagine that you could just make that totally up. I mean, so I, I think that that is a gift right there. That, you know, if you can make somebody think that you're the character just by, you know, what they're reading. You know, you have brought him to life. You have given, you know, Nikki a life of his own. And um, I think that's what I find when I, I'm, you know, when I'm reading normally. Um, that doesn't happen. That, you know, that the characters are just so alive that they just, you're like, this is really a person, okay? Maybe the vampire stuff isn't, but this is really a person. These things happen to this person, you know, and uh, for it to be, you know, made up, for it to be a figment of your imagination, that right there is talent, I think. I really do. So. Thank, thank you, Exina. How many times have you seen something, maybe in the movies or read a book, where something really weird or screwed up happened, and the people mm -hmm. just act like it's, you know, like it's nothing, Right. No, right. This, this is some weird shit going on. You know? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> you know, and, and people have to react that way. Uh, you know, that, that, that's why the supporting characters are so important. You haven't read the first novel, Extina, so one of the great supporting characters of the first novel was Dominic. You know, uh, somebody who, uh, 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 James will be able to attest to it, uh, somebody who, like, uh, you know, he's faced with all this weird stuff, and he's trying to process that in his mind like a real person. You know, uh, that's what you find in a lot of these stories is that you don't see the people trying to process what the hell's going on in their mind. You know, right. hey, this is a guy yeah. who didn't show up in a mirror. That's weird stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I don't want to speak of vampires. I'm, I'm sort of getting into the, and I, I couldn't get into the movie, but the, the TV series of what we do in the shadows um, is brilliant. I don't know if you, you you guys have seen it, but it is so the humour is so dry, so funny. It's got Matt Berry in it, and I'm a big he's a British actor, British uh, comedian actor, who is he's again just watch it for him. He's just fantastic. He's got such a, a tone to his voice that it, it's yeah, but I, yeah, I, I missed it. It's fun. I, I, I don't know who you were who? who? Matt Berry. Um, he's I he's in English. Know. He's he's in he's in what we do in the shadows. Um, again, oh, I, okay. I know him from some British TV shows, uh, Toast of London, and a bunch of other stuff. But um, uh, but he's he's great. He's just so just the humour is just so dry uh, and it is it's, it's about a bunch of vampires that share a house and just their everyday goings on but it's um it is i i i, I recommend it if you want a, a bit of a giggle watch it yeah you, you, you know and, and and the thing is uh if you're going to take a genre you know it, that, that that's what uh that that's kind of like a thorn on my side right now that the genre has been so overdone uh, if you're going to take a genre like this, uh, y y you have to do something new with it. The problem is that the outsider, it's difficult for them to tell whether you're doing something new with it or not. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. so that's why I avoid the B word as much as I can. Because uh, mm -hmm. people come with such prejudgment when, when that type of character is, is involved. Yeah, so like, yeah. Uh, Okay, we 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 know we know. No, you don't know. You don't know shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then, then you come. I mean, you 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 get you get the authors who you know they spell it with a Y, vampire, and they think you know <laughs> they're, they're being clever. Well, you know, you're not. They're not. You, you know what I say? You, what I, what I say to people, uh, especially in the first novel, you you'll appreciate this when you read it, Christina. Christina, excuse me. Uh, read the first two chapters. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel like reading after that, then okay, I, I didn't strike the nerve that I tried to strike with you. But most people, when they read the first two chapters, or in the screenplays that I wrote, the first uh, ten pages, if you mm -hmm. if, if it doesn't grab you, then okay, then it's not for you. But if you're looking for something different, something new, you will see it in those first two chapters or in those first ten pages of those of the script. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm already sold on Nikki, so I, I can't, you know, I, I, I am going to read The Color of Dying. It's just, the, you know, when, when James gives me some time off from work, you know, I mean, geez. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> is, that, that is never going to happen. We are, we are just so busy at the moment. I can't, we can't afford for you to take time off. How dare you? How dare you? You're not cracking that whip, Xena. Although, Xena probably likes that. Let's, let's face it, we know that. that right? That, that, well, that, that, that's a whole, a whole different aspect to, to what's going on here. But, um, but mo moving on, moving on. <laughs> yeah, moving on. What is um, what's a, what do you do? What are you working on now, Carlos? Right now, uh, right now, what I'm working on is uh, condensing. Uh, well, well, it's like we're going back and forth, whether it's going to be a TV series or an independent movie. So right now I'm working on condensing uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 first season that I wrote into one uh, into uh, one uh, two hour movie, say script. Which, by the way, uh, if uh, we ever got to do this as a TV series. Uh, book one will be the first season. Book two will be the second season. 
Um, I, I think it would make a tremendous, like a HBO Caesar series, or even like Amazon or uh, Netflix. I think it'd be fantastic as a. I, I would like it as a series because I think the there's, great there's, thing t- about try and condense it into a, you know, an hour and a half or two hour movie. I think there's, there's just it would be too rushed. I, I would like to see it over like an eight or ten part season. Personally speaking, yeah. and, and, and you're right, James. I am finding that uh, the great thing about it, it being a TV series is you get to explore the other characters even more. There's so much more story that you can tell uh, for, let's say, Travis, uh, for uh, Dominic, uh, for Stephanie. Uh, there's so much more story available uh, in, in, the, in the new novel, uh, Agent Howard, uh, you know, who's really a pain in the ass for Nikki. You know, there's so much more storytelling there. Definitely. I, I hate to say this, Carlos, but we're just about out of time for our show. And it um you haven't found it. I know. It, it, it does. does, yeah, I know. <laughs> you should have um, given me a whole you should give me a whole episode. I should have. Yeah, and yes. I'm not gonna say about Kirsten. Kirsten was great, by the way. I I just don't say that. But uh, you should have given me a whole episode. Well um, blame 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 the management. You know, I keep saying you can't get <laughs> I'm only you kidding. Can't, you, you can't know. get the stuff. We 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 need a full a full Carlos episode. So um, let's do. make that and happen. We want more, and we want I more te- music. I, 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 I use James a lot. I'm such a deep. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. <laughs> well, the the, the only proviso is going to be that the mu- the music was going to have to be live. Carlos is going to have to perform definitely. each music yeah. interlude live, and then we will do a full a full Carlos show. I, I think that would be I phenomenal. Just, I'll, I'll make that happen. Yeah, I'll get with Carlos. You do we'll that. that happen. Thank you so, again for coming on. Carlos, I mean, I just, just actually don't rush him off. Tell us where we can <laughs> find you, Carlos. Uh, sorry, what did you say? Well, tell us where we can find you and uh, Sangray. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, you can find me at uh, facebook.com slash Sangre the novel. Uh, and, and, and everybody out there is listening, uh, I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. I, I, I was concerned about writing a sequel, that it wouldn't live up to the original, but I'm thinking that it did. What do you think, James? Definitely. I def- yes. Yeah, I would agree. And again, sequels can go, it can go either way, but no, I, I you know, I, 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 you don't have to have read the first one, but I would certainly... Um, yeah. Uh, recommend Agreed. people read the first one just because it's a it's a bloody good book as well. So um, yeah, and of course, obviously, you can find both books on the Hellbound Books Publishing website too. Yeah. Yes. So and, uh, right. Hey, hey, and, and you know, Nikki Negron has his own Facebook page too. So if anybody wants to talk to Nikki Negron, by all means, uh, he will answer you only at night, of course. Um, of course, because he's, he's asleep during. The, I like that. So, a bit like my kids, actually. <laughs> they 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 go nocturnal this time of year. So um. <laughs> so anyway, Carlos, and, 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 and I just I want to plug for Danny. Danny go for Arroyo, it. working hard at getting this down up in this on the screen. Danny Arroyo, take a look at Danny Arroyo's page as well. Excellent. I should definitely do that. We will do that. We need to, we need to put him, him on and put a link on our website as well. So uh, we'll do that. So, Carlos, it's been an absolute pleasure as, as always. And um, I, we will have you on again for a whole show to yourself very, very soon. I will make sure that happens. It's always fun. Play some more Rockabilly. And, you know, I'm just about, I am just about <laughs> to hit the button. So uh, it's time to say good night, Christina. Good night, James. Good night, Christina. Good night. <laughs>
baby. Ooh. 